Hello everyone, we're back with you from the Manu development team. This time, we'd like to tell you how you can create a rather unusual mechanic for your game that will change one main acting character into another. In other words, your player can first play as the antagonist and protagonist, for example. Does this sound interesting to you? Then let's get started. But before we start, we suggest you subscribe to our channel and like this video. If your friends also dream of creating games or want to try their hand at being a developer, share the link to this video with them. We are confident it will be helpful for you. Today's topic is about the use of variables in game development. Variables are used to store information that can be used later when needed. Manu offers four types of variables, which are the number variable for storing numbers, the boolean variable for true-false values, the object variable for referencing objects, and the tag variable for referencing tags. In this example, we will use a number variable named HP to store our character's health value, which is initially set to 100. We can modify the type of the variable and perform actions such as renaming, copying, or deleting it. To decrease the character's health when attacked by the chicken, we add the character's body to the timeline and set the HP variable to decrease by 10 during this chicken's attack animation. Additionally, we create a new boolean variable named ogre form that can hold false values. We want the player's appearance to transform into an ogre when this variable becomes true. To do so, we create a new animation with the ogre's body and set the enabled parameter to yes, while disabling the shepherd's body and setting the enabled parameter to no. This animation will trigger when the ogre form variable becomes true. Likewise, we duplicate the animation but disable the ogre's body and enable the shepherd's body instead. We set this animation to trigger when the ogre form variable becomes false. Furthermore, we can use the boolean variable as a required parameter to play the ogre's walking animation only when the ogre form value is continuously true. And we do the same for all other animations associated with the ogre's and shepherd's bodies. In this example, we create two simple animations that can be triggered by pressing a button to change the value of the ogre form boolean variable. The player transforms into an ogre when the boolean variable becomes true and changes back to shepherd form when the boolean variable becomes false. To better understand the object variable, we previously created a simple NPC path with two points. We set the object variable's initial reference to point 2 of the path and made the selected point track the variable's reference object coordinates. We can dynamically change the object's variable's reference to target a different object, such as point 2 of the path when the character is happy and point 1 of the path when the character is terrified. We made the necessary changes in the state machine to trigger the NPC's behavior according to the player's form. The NPCs will run to their second point on the path when the player is an ogre and return to the first point when the player becomes a shepherd again. We also used a tag variable for the player and a tag called friend to set the variable's reference to it. When the player collides with the goat, the goat expresses her love. We could have used the friend tag itself, but by binding the tag to a variable, we make it easier for other users who want to make changes to this mechanism in the future. The result will be the same, and the goat will still express her love when a collision event occurs between the goat and the player's tag variable. And with you was the Manu Project team. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can leave your comments and questions below this video. We are happy to respond to your messages. And don't forget that becoming a game creator is easier than you think. See you later.